Hello everybody, it's JJ. So, um, I am in the library again, so I'll try to speak up as much as possible. Hopefully you can hear me. I just flew back in town and like literally went from the airport to class to here to film this. So this week's topic is death and, um, and so I wanted to, I guess, focus on something that Josh brought up which is how sad it feels to lose people and how painful the idea is of losing someone in the future that you haven't even lost yet. Um, I remember when I was little saying to my mom, um, I think I probably said this to a lot of people, you know, I want to have so many pets. I want dogs and cats I want to rescue them and I want fish and I want snakes and I love animals but imagine how many pets I'm gonna have to bury <laughs> is what went through my head like oh it's so exciting to have all these animals and take care of them but that's so much more pain that I'm gonna have to go through I'm gonna have the more you have the more you have to lose um, and I I don't want people to go in this direction where they're they're so worried about losing things that they don't attempt to hold on to them or they push them away because I think that happens a lot. I know a lot of people, you know, even if it's the other way around, I know a lot of people with terminal illnesses who get divorced or push away their family because they don't want their family to be in pain and they don't want to be in pain and sad and like they want to make it easier because if you're not emotionally attached to this person if they die it's not going to be as difficult um i guess it just kind of boils down to the the whole you know is it better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all idea um and i think Yes, probably, <laughs> I mean, it, having someone close to you die is very, very bad, um, it's, I guess that's the only word I can say, it's devastating, it's miserable, um, but you shouldn't sacrifice the relationships around you for the fear of that happening, um, and we put ourselves at risk for that all the time. The more we isolate ourselves, the less we have to lose, but also the less we have to live for and the less we accomplish in our lives. And I'm not saying, you know, you have to have everyone around you all the time to accomplish things. Um, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. What I'm trying to say is you have to live your life to the fullest and be happy. And that is going to involve being in situations that could potentially hurt you. Um, and you could lose somebody like a parent or a sibling and I cannot imagine what it would be like to lose one of my siblings but I can guarantee you that if I did what wouldn't go through my mind was I wish you know I never had them as a sibling at all because um, I feel like that would just lead to a very unfulfilling and unhappy life it's playing it safe and it it just, I feel like it accomplishes nothing. And I feel like thinking of death in this way and thinking about it years before it's probably even going to happen puts you at risk for sacrificing the time you have now. Um, and every second that goes by, you know, I've been talking for four minutes and 19 seconds. Those are four minutes and 19 seconds that are gone forever. I'm never getting back. Um... And it's important to embrace those seconds, every single one of them. And I'm not saying, you know, do crazy things all the time or whatever, but we spend a lot of our time waiting for things. You know, waiting to get off work, waiting to get out of class, waiting until a concert or a party, waiting until you get to see someone you care about, um, waiting until... You graduate, and we're waiting and waiting and waiting, and we're constantly 
forgetting about the in-between times. And so then, you know, you die and at the end of your life you have these these great moments to look back on. But if you had just stopped for a minute and stopped looking ahead and worrying about what's in next week or what's in 20 years and just focus on right now and the relationships you have and the time you have, I feel like you will be so much happier and feel so much more fulfilled. And I feel the way to alleviate any sort of fear about death or sadness about death, at least one of the ways is to to keep yourself in check in that manner, to, to stay self-aware and to constantly be asking yourself, you know, what am I doing right now? Like, what should I be doing? What could I be doing? What do I want to be doing? You know, I can sit here in this library for three more hours until my exam, which is three hours of my life I'll never get back. And I could sit here and be really bored um, and complain about it or just stress out or whatever. Or I could, you know, I could read a book. I could work on some of my writing projects. I could film this video. I could talk to some of my friends. I could call my mom. And again, you know, it's not like you have to do things 24-7, but sometimes we forget that, you know, this three hours that I have are precious. Um, and I think it's important to take note of that and to, to consider that every day. Just ask yourself, you know, how am I making sure that this relationship or this life is fulfilling in such a way that when this person passes, when I pass, it won't be not worth it. Those are just some of my rambly thoughts. That was very rambly. I'm sorry. Thank you all for watching. My channel is JJ Talks. If you want to check it out, I'll put it in the description. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. And who's up next? It's Wednesday, which means D-Land and Cole.